wee so, yeah, bit. Well, it's true. <laughs> All right, we should like be live. Sort of like an addiction that I've had to fight. I'm gonna start the tweets. Wow, because I mean, because it's yeah, ditto. Let me shtick to me is about, get this pushed down. You know, touching other people like somehow. Yeah. So we talked a little bit about kind of the the origin. I'm gonna jump ahead again. I'm gonna jump to my life, 2004. I remember I finished the campaign for Halo 2, and, and my friends and I got distracted a bunch by the multiplayer, and I finished it the same night I finished Metal Gear 3. And after I finished both of those games, I went Metal Gear 3, there's a mood. Mm. Mm. <laughs> like, I, look, I, I look at now, and I you know, met a bunch of y'all, and I, I'm like, oh, I didn't pick up on all the like human suffering <laughs> this, this time <laughs> the, first time, the first time I watched it. Do I get to sign your? Uh, no. Do you remember? Copy? Do you remember this? I looked for it actually before I came in today. I, I don't. I don't think I have it anymore. You don't? Yeah. You know, I remember the sweatshirt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The so this was this. Yeah. This. This is the this marathon. Is, what is this from? Yeah. <laughs> like what is this actually? I've like wondered this. Like what is this? <laughs> It was just like what did this? Yeah, I it, it's it said Osiris on it. I thought it looked cool, and yeah, I bought it. I have no idea. I sadly, yeah, right? I, I have no idea what it was. Yeah, I still to this day, I literally I remember the sweatshirt, right? Yeah, and this yeah. is the moment. This is this moment that I became like aware that humans make these things because otherwise it was like magic, right? Like, the, yeah, like right. there's nothing yeah. in like there's nothing in 2004 about. Look at these developers making stuff that you care about. It does not, like, there wasn't really much of, like, the internet sucked, too. Like, you didn't have, like, look, you can access these people. And they, none of that. Woo! It was totally different times. Right. I'm watching this, this documentary, and, and, and you, this dude shows up, and so, the paraphrase is, like, you know, um, like the cynical gamers who something doesn't grab us in five minutes, you know, we're going to we're gonna turn it off. And it was, like, I was, like, oh, my God. It was, like, I was spoke to, and I have, like, no, like, I'm, like, an Let's English see. degree. I'm like, I can't make games. Mm -hmm. I couldn't write any program. Like, couldn't write code or anything. I just remember, I remember feeling as a, as a, as, like, a player, like, super duper spoke to in, in that moment. And so we come out of the, the building a game, like, building it by yourself, and talk now about, like, the, the team has changed. Like, building teams has changed. Like, the way you think about building teams has changed. The way, Bun like, in the however many years I've been at Bungie now, in the fifth, like, the way the company approaches building teams have changed. Let's go all the way back to, to Halo 2. Like, building the team for Halo 1 and Halo 2. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay. I, I, think, I think if... Tweeting the PD now. Was here, he would have... Yeah, he would disagree. Retweet with at the ready. That I'm gonna say. I think compared to the and intentionality that I'm gonna get some water real quick. Try and sometimes okay. exhibit. I get the feeling you'll need it. Have about yeah you know, about <laughs> building teams and how important teams are. Back then, it was almost just this, you know, snowball that was rolling downhill of people who, you know, liked our games and came to the company, and you know, then you know, it, it snowball rolled a little faster, and it was. Yeah, it was just a bunch of people trying to do their best, trying to recreate the feelings that they had, you know, when they played when they played games. And you can get pretty far on on passion and and talent, but it sometimes makes things really, yeah, really hard when you're not being thoughtful about the organization of the team. It's kind of an interesting way to roll the into the showcase relative to the resources mm -hmm. and time you have. Talk about the team building yeah, it the history. Made Halo Two super challenging for a bunch of reasons, but. Yeah, I don't know. I guess that's I'm, yeah. And and past Jason would would tell me like you're an idiot. We were thinking about all that stuff. You just had to learn. But like when I look back, like he wasn't thinking about that stuff. <laughs> you know. What was he thinking about? I mean, he was just thinking about the game. But I, I mean, I don't know. I always think. I mean, I think my past self is like not really that sharp because I. I mean, every year we've learned so much. I I I feel, and so I look back and I think that you know that guy must be. That guy must be an idiot. Because <laughs> look, look, look at all the stuff I learned just this year on Halo One. Like I didn't know any, I didn't know anything. But I go back and yeah, I found one of the notebooks from Halo One. Like that guy wasn't an idiot. Like I mean, there's stuff that <clears throat> you know he didn't know. But um, there's a Luke lot of was like, having flashbacks there for a second. And thought and like possibilities yeah. that you know, didn't know the game in there and. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what to. I don't know what to make of that because I feel. I feel like I've learned so much, but when I go back, I'm. I'm sort of like blown away by, you know what? Yeah, what was what was happening in in my mind? Um, yeah, it's pretty embarrassing when I think about like the. I mean, I think about my life in terms of decades and like what's the what are like the big lessons from the the decades. And as I when I like articulate one of the like a, a lesson from my thirties, it's like so embarrassing. Give me one from yours. <laughs> oh man. 
with the I boss mean, on really the spot. Started, started <laughs> Destiny one, not understanding the value of having at least somebody on the on, you know on the team who cares more than anybody else about yeah what what the team is missing what the team isn't admitting who on the team isn't talking to each other where on the team is our are our dreams incompatible with the calendar or our dreams in, incompatible with our ability or our dreams incompatible with the hardware that we need to run on um and i saw production as you know a calendar and a schedule um and it's true that a schedule is a thing that you use to sort of test people's understanding of reality in the sense of, you know, can the things we want to do fit in the time that we think we have and how are we tracking? Interesting way that? to look at a schedule. But I saw it as right. like an end in itself. And of course it irritated me and I, you know, didn't pay attention to it. But God, like embracing all that stuff is a thing that will be, yeah, front and center in anything that I do. Yeah, anything I do in the future. I think it's making sure everyone on the team has an objective understanding of reality and doing anything you can to fix it when that isn't true. I didn't understand that when I started destiny one, destiny one made me understand that. <laughs> so what I want to talk about now is where computers are heading. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> where's it going? Where's, where's it going? AR is going to be the thing that displaces mobile. Like I'm so I'm so sure of that. I'm so sure we're all going to be wearing glasses. Oh, 100 percent. All the TVs are going I would to go do it landfill. Now. All those companies right are going now. to go business <laughs> all the time. <laughs> if I could, if I can AR everything, in our glasses, mm, yeah. Like so many. If I see one tiny little bit of reality in my face, Taj I went gone. Get, a, get it out. Get it out. I don't want it. And I, I, maybe it, it'll be maybe it'll be 20 years. Like, Bungie's next game confirmed the VR game. That, and, I, and I think it's going to be <laughs> when it happens. Like the reason that you're going to know it's going to take over the whole world is that everybody's going to laugh at it. Like everybody's going to think it's ridiculous. When the, when, the, when the iPhone, you know, came out, the stuff people were saying to like not admit that they were holding like a the future. You know, chunk of the sun in their yeah. hands that was going to mm -hmm. change the world. Like the stuff people said was ridiculous. That's true. And, and people are going to do that again. And the other interesting thing about AR is if you have AR, you have to have local compute. <sighs> you need Big high day. frame rate. You need to be able to render all kinds of crazy stuff, like right there, like, you know, within. And that's kind of body. a loaded conversation yeah, about. I think the, all the cloud computing yeah. stuff is totally going to happen. Absolutely going to be a thing. And I mean, it's something um, they've experimented with before. We're not going to transition you know? fully to you know, thin <laughs> They hit a spear yeah, package on a mountain. My two predictions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's very true. <laughs> AR displaces mobile like 100%, 100%. So on a long enough horizon, how are we going to get ready for that? We got, we got, it's, uh, yeah, like the, you know. So, so it, yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a great question. And I, I think I think the answer is like we are we already are like I I don't think what's going to happen is there's going to be a whole Whew. slew of games that can only happen in AR. I mean, there's definitely going to be some, but I think in a lot of cases what's going to happen is people are going to yeah throw away their TV and have a way bigger TV, or they're going to so go to a totally virtual space that has a bigger you know screen, and they might play some tabletop or strategy games in a different way but I, I think people are always going to be playing what you're telling first me. person shooters you know with some kind of uh, input device what you're telling me on like a virtual <clears> you know, is that window in their visual field i get to play so that chess game from star wars stuff that we're great at <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. yes absolutely yeah get tipped also, over. What is going on with Discord? Think we're great at right, so let's go all, all the way back oh kite left kite breaker someday blue not the coming okay. oh okay but i'm going to then move to plan b would go on my tombstone. Uh, just, I'm just okay. going to tell Kaith like, not to join. I think it's. I think it's so. I think it's like completely busted. I don't think it's like a, a thing a normal, like reason. Plan A didn't even last. Do you want to pull light in? Do you think we have time for that? Uh, for that, that these existences sometimes come. If back. the question I want to ask is about he can. I mean, I can. I can do that. Like, 
What is that? What is that simple Beat distillation? Oh, well, like yeah. Uh, well, is. let's make sure Kite's not okay. Kite is coming back. Oh, okay. Okay. Hello. I was on the two seventy one. Okay, back so Kaith is back. Um, Light Razor, I love you, bud. One night on the bus. I got you next time. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's your baited light. Talking. You know, at first about college. Was this like between were, two were, ferns? Yes. Older, but they'd obviously like gone to college together. Mm -hmm. and a more serious between together. two ferns. And at some point, they started talking about. It's been like two and a half and weeks since I've even seen a flicker in the power here. Them. But of course, I get to. <laughs> of course. Have that happen now. <laughs> they weren't really Dude. talking about how much. <laughs> it always you know, happens on the day they were talking about <laughs> something important. And they really talking the about day that you needed is the day it fails. Doing is they were sharing the stories of, you know, where they were and what they were doing and how they were, how they were feeling and. You know that that moment, you know, that's like still keeping me going. I mean, that that might fuel me for the rest of my life, and it's not the only time that's happened. But you get a few of those, and you know, that's all <laughs> it's just I did I forgot that that I gave you that that emo memories. <laughs> you did. <laughs> yep. Oh wait, <laughs> it's finally <laughs> happened. <laughs> The yes. angry, the angry dan the dangrening the dangrening has happened <laughs> code or excellent design work or something like that that's i what, truly think yeah two people have um, experience that they wouldn't have had the emote named um, destiny dan you know, is so freaking funny <laughs> like, that's, that's what matters that's what matters to me we're done <laughs> All right, kids. interesting interview. Not bad at all. We're just going right into like the trailer. Um, give okay. the ability to turn the video down, Dan. Yes, I do. Okay, I think temporarily, just so we can do a proper intro before things get started. Right, right. Uh, for the purpose of the YouTube channel. So let me know when you do. All do all good, dude. Right on. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Planet Destiny's live coverage of the Destiny 2 Showcase. We are merely seconds away from getting into not only Season 15, but everything that's going to be coming beyond that. We're going to be having a live panel here with people from the podcast. We got Dan Finity. Hello, I was sipping water. <laughs> yes, he was sipping water. That's why I chose you. We've got Nim Plays. I was hoping you would choke. Uh, we've got Nim Plays. Hey, how's it going? Moonball is here, too. Hey! Good to see you. Good, good to talk to you, buddy. Yep, yep, thanks. <laughs> and Clive from the lore team is going to be joining us as well. Welcome to the show. All right, 10 seconds, gang. Here we go. Ten seconds away. So we're going to be covering this live. We're going to try not to talk over Bungie when they're doing their thing, but we'll have a wrap-up at the end of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's mm -hmm. get into it. Welcome, Guardians. This year, we're celebrating our journey with you. Whether you joined us 30 years Big ago... Stage. Or if it just started today. Yeah, big time. <laughs> yeah, good Games stuff. Blood. The Destiny team is full of Destiny fans. Folks who came here because Destiny was their favorite hobby. Folks who log out from work in the evening and log in to play with their clan. The team we have today is committed to relentlessly upgrading this game that we all love. We aren't happy with just another mission. Instead, we want to push the limit of quality you can expect in an action MMO with uniquely Destiny experiences stash. like Expunge yeah. and Presage. <laughs> we are committed to delivering the best mission content Jealous that you can already. play in any 100%. game. 100%. Well I might as well just go and shave now. Theory. Yeah, why did y'all start growing mustaches? And I mean, I can easily do it now. Passion that we see yeah, I, I haven't Destiny started, but after today. We declared independence two years ago, <laughs> the Destiny community has grown by over 20 million new players. Holy shit! And it continues to grow faster yeah. than we ever could have predicted. Free to play. We're grateful to be a part of this amazing growing community that you all have created. You represent Destiny. You help make it better every year. Lulu. Lulu. So welcoming and supportive I love Lulu. of every new guardian that sets foot in the tower. And only a handful of us are going to be up here today. Most of them are in their homes at their desks, working hard to bring the next part of Destiny to life. It's a huge honor representing such an incredible team and introducing the next chapter of Destiny 2. So, without further ado, Oh, this... there's oh, a we're just, jump, we're just jumping into it. Let's do it. All right. I like the production values. Yeah. Good stuff. <gasps> Truth is a 
funny thing. I swear that's Nika Futterman. Does it live Goosebumps, in the dude. world? <laughs> or in the Turn up the volume on the video, Dan. On it. Is it constant? Or can it be bad? universe of light and dark there is no greater power oh tell oh, wow. me little lights oh what is your truth now those are ghosts those are mm -hmm. those are hot ghosts oh no ah yeah we're fucked i have thoughts on I this i surrender <laughs> I, for one, welcome our new moth-winged overlords. If I get moth-wings, then I'm with you. <laughs> it's the truth. All right. Holy shit. That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> that's that's not supposed to happen. Nope. That's not supposed to happen. Oh, my God, James. Sabathun is serious. I think she's the most dangerous villain. I, I gotta say, yet. those remind Seven me of. Seven years we've been uh, building up to this moment, and she is finally stepping into the spotlight and showing us who she really is. We have to shoot ghosts what before we, know we do damage to them. What we know about light and darkness is proving oh, to be no. way more complex than what we previously thought. There are so many lies, truths, and revelations that we're going to get to in the Witch Queen and the year leading up to it. I mean, we're paying off these narrative threads that go all the way back to Destiny's yeah. origins. Hopefully, they take the Cade route of protecting their ghosts. Destiny has to offer. <laughs> Definitely, and we've got a Why lot not? of awesome content to show today. <laughs> Let's start with the most mysterious destination yet. Yeah. Sabathun's throne world. Okay. This is an uncharted wonderland of secrets and lies. It's this place that she's created in her own image, this surreal and majestic light-blessed world. She has this light castle blessed? that she rules from. It I only looks love this dark, smoke. swampy underbelly. Excuse me? This lone pyramid ship out there. It's the future world she wanted to create, People said old built atop Chicago. the darkness that she left behind. In throne worlds, they're a deep part of destiny lore. Powerful <laughs> entities create these pocket universes, and when we're there, we have to play by their rules. But now, our own light powers are being used against us. I mean, she has this whole army of hive that she's Dude, ascended to the light sick. and brought along yeah. with her. These oh. are the hive guardians, and they are the backbone of her new armor that armor on my body. We've talked Same. a lot. Let's show a little. Let's take the first ever look at the Witch Queen gameplay. Oh, and why? Yeah, if there's a mold class, I want royalties. Savathun, the Witch Queen. Hive god of cunning and lies. After the death of her brother, Oryx, Savathun went into hiding. Damn, dude. Not out of fear, of course. But out of strategy. <laughs> In her greatest trick yet, stealing our most sacred resource. The one thing we thought she could never touch. Yeah. <laughs> That's so the cool. Light. Damn. Oh my. The hyper popping supers. <laughs> This is like don't love that. I well, mean, I love I that, but I don't general. love that. These are yeah. the hero solos that they do generally for Guardians. Which is nuts. Yeah, it's the Hive. Nope. I get finishers? Great turn. Question mark. Don't like is that. that. Spear? Nope. Oh, That's a that spear. A spear? Yeah. <laughs> is Nim about to be a spear boy? I will work for whoever gives me that spear. Crush it. What? Yeah, that's what yes! I'm talking about. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> that's rad. I cannot wait just to reach out that's and just insane. crush a hive ghost in my hand. That's yeah, got to be mean, a finisher, right? We've been defined by the yeah. light for so long. This is uncharted 100%. territory for us. I mean, we're in strange new places. Like, the throne world, it's haunting, but it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. There's a lot to love. There's a few things we saw on the trail that we haven't talked about yet. Sabathun and her lucent brood. This is the biggest threat Guardians have faced yet, so we Light need to find brood. new weapons okay. to match their power. The Glaive. The Glaive. I love this thing. It's brutal and elegant, 
It's this new oh, energy an weapon. An energy projectiles? Did I hear the word projectiles? Yeah. So I think YouTube is a little bit behind ever, Twitch. <laughs> and it is such an awesome tool for the battlefield. Okay. Okay. That that oh, feels so good. Just jump in and unleash yes. these brutal melee combos and transition yes. right to an energy blast. That's fantastic. It's really powerful and has a lot of utility. I can't wait for my glaive so, bullets. We've told you about what the glaive can do. Now let's talk about how you're going to get your hands on one. These weapons don't come out of chests at the end of missions, yeah. and you're not going to find one roaming around the throne world. Your first glaive is not going to be found. It's going right. to be yes. yes. What? Right. We is coming to Destiny 2. Okay. Now, chasing weapons has been an integral weapon part of the pursuit game since the beginning. And over the years, we've added more deterministic paths to get the roles that you want on guns. Think things like umbral engrams and the raid chest. Weapon crafting unlocks the freedom to choose all that and more. It gives us ultimate control over the guns. Now, this is a combat-focused crafting and progression system. That means the more you use these weapons, the more objectives you complete with them, the more you'll level them up, and the mm. more powerful they grow over time. And at launch, here's the awesome thing. You'll be able to craft all Throne World weapons. It's about damn weapons, time. And the seasonal weapons. Yeah. There's just a ton of stuff to do in this system. And the Witch Queen yeah. is just the beginning okay. of Okay. All right. We have plans to add and legacy weapons, weapons. okay legacy and new throughout the year we've seen and we've talked about a lot of really cool features but let's get right into the meat of it let's talk about the witch queen campaign i love campaigns they've always been a cornerstone of the destiny experience they're rich deep stories interwoven with big combat sequences and memorable characters they take us to remote worlds in our ever-changing universe and so we're putting extra care into the campaign for the Witch Queen. We want you to feel those goosebumps when you step onto the throne world for the first time and come face to face with Hive Guardians. And every one of the missions has its own unique fantasy. Like, what does it feel like to storm a castle or just go straight into the depths of hell? If you oh. like games with standalone campaigns like Doom, Titanfall 2, God of War, and Halo, okay. then the Witch Queen is for you. All right. Damn. All right. So. In addition to our classic normal mode, Legendary is our tougher, aspirational version of the campaign, where the enemies hit harder. Hard mode campaign. And respawning is heavily restricted. So every battle is a gut punch. Every boss is a worthy adversary. <laughs> it's gonna hurt. You might tap out, but if you persist and you get to the end, your time will be well rewarded. Whether you want to play solo or with a fire team, the difficulty will scale based on how many people you bring. Cool. Before we go, Two one tokens last trip memory lane. I remember camping out the Predator for Destiny 1 because I just had to have the ghost. To me, it was like the symbol of destiny. And if you care about that stuff like me, you're going to want to get your hands on the collector's edition. No, you don't. Oh, oh boy. All Nim's money gone. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Okay. Are you going to crush it live on stream, Nim? Because <laughs> you should. You should. Oh, Lord. Oh, boy. <laughs> Nim. <laughs> That's cool. They look like little face huggers. <laughs> they are. <laughs> wow, that's so cool. So nice. I'm, so, oh. I'm so excited oh. for this one. And that's not even everything that's in there, too. I know. Those are the hero items, and they're, I think, one of the best ones that we've ever done. Collector's editions have hey, always Odie. been There's like this really perfect hey. jumping point to enter the worlds that we build and actually lifting like in-world objects and putting them in players' hands is just, it's just a good feeling. We don't just put random items. Everything in there means something, and it helps push the narrative. And there might be some puzzles to oh, unlock that's in there cool. as well. Oh, that's cool. Nim just spent a lot of money today. So at this point, you can see Sabathun has been one of our greatest threats, operating behind the scenes for years. You may have heard of her brother, the Taken King, but Sabathun is the most dangerous being we've ever faced. She's cunning, elusive, she works in the shadows, so in a way, Sabathun is new to all of us. Exactly, and now it's time to finally see this legend reveal herself and change the Destiny universe forever. But when we talk about the overarching story of Destiny, we don't just mean the plot lines or characters that feature release to release. Narrative is a guiding force in Destiny, and we're calling on its rich history of world building, bringing that to the forefront and growing it in a bold new direction. So when you join the game today, you'll experience an immediate call to action alongside millions of your fellow guardians. 
During this past year, we watched the results of your actions play out across Destiny's seasonal releases. You've redeemed old foes, brought former enemies to the bargaining table, learned Destiny that there's always more than one side to every story, and minions. built alliances no one ever thought possible. And on the largest scale, you'll experience a Everyone vast, wanted living, to go interconnected kiss world of at the same time. striving to <laughs> yeah. and it broke the servers. You'll experience this alongside a massive community of guardians, release after release, together. This is our universe's cosmic purpose. This 10-year journey we've been on since Destiny 1, it's drawing to its dramatic conclusion. The light and darkness saga will end. But make okay. no mistake, Destiny 2 will not. We're building okay. not so much to an ending, but more to this transformative moment for Destiny 2's future. Last year, we announced The Witch Queen and the following expansion, Lightfall. And now what? we're excited to announce the release after Lightfall, the final chapter in the Light and Darkness saga, Destiny 2, The Final Shape. It's okay. going to be one wild, continuous ride. Yes. And that ride starts with Season of the Lost. Not only is it the prologue to The Witch Queen, it's your first opportunity to interact with Sabathun. Yes, but please. But rather than spoil it for you, why don't we take a look? Okay. So many goosebumps, dude. Oh, the dig the armor. Storm, the There's Mara. And the oh. City must stand oh. 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 Huh. We are surrounded. A ring of spears pointing inward from the edges of our system. The Witch Queen is oh, more dangerous now than she has ever been. We must uncover whatever secrets she knows with the time that we have. We light the pathways of the ascendant plane and back to the dreaming city, like we thought. Back. Good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For the yes, let me be taken. All right. There is a malevolent. That the EDZ? That is the EDZ. Oh. Huh. It's a trace oh, rifle. Is that a stasis? Oh my god! <laughs> you were right. It's a stasis trace rifle. Thanks. Hell yeah. Hello. Oh. What? What? Ooh. I need it. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, February 22nd. Oh, okay. All right. February 22nd. Seasons have gone through massive transformations hey, since Shattered Lobby. Lake. We're dedicated to creating an evolving, interconnected world that puts your guardian at the center of the action. We're reaching the end of one journey and the beginning of another. The days of Destiny's biggest story Ugh. moments happening in lore pages is long gone. I mean, Mara's return has been hinted at forever, and now it's happening in a season. One of the changes I'm most excited about are the updates to the light subclasses okay. every season in year Whoa. five of Destiny Whoa. 2. What was that? Aspects that was a All right. Hello, yes. We'll be starting with the Void subclass huh. update that goes live alongside the Witch Queen. Oh, but yes. the Witch Queen is only the beginning of what's to come, and Season of the Lost is the prologue to that story. It starts off with Marasov's return to the Dreaming City, and with her return, okay. all the Awoken technology comes alive. But the Hive God of War, Zivu Wrath, has reemerged and has Guardians and Mara in her sights. Ooh, sick armor. Guardians okay. must forge a path through the Ascendant Plane to save Mars' lost coven of witches before Zivu Wrath can reach them. And to aid you in this task, you'll have the Wayfinder's Compass. The time Artifact? Is mm -hmm. is yeah, for sure. Right, and the ley lines are set in place. It's an ancient awoken artifact that gives the wielder the power to uncover pathways, so secrets, like and the treasures tincture. within the mm -hmm. Ascendant Plane. Good. There's a plethora Ooh, oh, of look at those coming. weapons! And cannon, a legendary bro. stasis guns that will stop your enemies cold. Was that a 180? Yeah, it looks like a 180. Like it. Oh, oh dude, like look at that armor. Court. Mm. And no season is complete without new exotics. And Season of the Lost features one once intended for a while. Oh, I want that trace! <laughs> a trace so rifle! Oh. Alright, let's trials. take a moment to talk about trials. 
So Trials of Osiris is the end game aspirational PVP activity and more popular than ever. Two of the biggest asks from our community have been adding anti-cheat and adding Excellent. matchmaking. In Season of the Lost, we're doing both. We've partnered with BattleEye to soft launch the anti-cheat software when Trials goes live on September 10th. Also, you'll be able to matchmake with groups of players. Excellent. To Trials players matchmaking? Solo Excellent. Oh, hell and yeah. And next, how rewards are distributed to give all okay. players the opportunity to earn this some of the best happen. weapons and coolest mm -hmm. armor in the game. That's right. We're shifting away from winning matches as a primary way to earn loot, and instead, winning individual rounds and completing matches will allow you to earn some rewards. But going flawless hasn't changed. So if you want to flex those PvP skills, the flawless chest will still be the only Fantastic. place to earn adept Trials weapons nice. and unique cosmetics. All right, so the next chapter in Destiny begins right after this stream with Season of the Lost. Return to the Dreaming City with Marisov and learn the mystic art of wayfinding. I'm so excited oh, Crossbow is going live today. And today is your first opportunity to jump Not into early Destiny in the season. with friends on first any day. platform Excellent. from all That's over fantastic. the world. Play well, they sure together. shut us up. <laughs> what were we complaining about last night? <laughs> Literally oh last God. night. So Crossplay is live today? It's going live yep. today. That is awesome. It's pretty devastating as we look at the Time to kick him where it hurts. Halo. Oni. I played that game. <laughs> old ass. <laughs> 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 old. <laughs> Marathon. We take it. I was just watching Evade's video about uh, Marathon and this how it could cue into Destiny. It could. What a shot. Oh, that was good. Yeah, that was real good. Yeah, next time we do one of these, I've got to do it on Twitch. Because <laughs> I think it's a little bit behind you guys. Seconds, yeah. I want that aspect. Right? You can't have it. I can't have it. Bro, I just want to shatter. I feel like I can't. Dogs. <laughs> yes, shit, Tom. How do you follow that? Wow. 30 years. And I, I, I remember when Halo first launched, and my friends and I completed the entire campaign in a single epic play session. And as the credits rolled, I knew 
that, that Bungie had transformed console gaming forever and that, that I would be a lifelong fan. Yeah, it changed how we played games too. I remember getting together with friends for Halo weekend LAN parties. We had so much fun. And 30 years of Bungie games is something special. It's something worth celebrating together. Ooh. So we're going to oh. have a party in Destiny 2. Starting this December, we are okay. launching the Bungie 30th okay. anniversary celebration in Destiny 2. Free for all players, the 30th anniversary celebration will offer a new six-player matchmate activity, hmm. secrets to unravel, and rewards that commemorate Crossovers? our long oh, and storied history. Give me a needler in, in Destiny, That's baby. <laughs> In addition to the free event, players can also purchase the Bungie 30th Anniversary Pack that includes a new oh. treasure-themed three-player dungeon set on the Cosmodrome Ooh. within the famous no way. Players oh. will its what? to discover an exciting oh. Thorn-inspired armor set and fan-favorite oh. Destiny 1 weapons like Isaluna and Thousand Yard oh, Stare. Shit. It even has the Claymore Benji can stop tweeting now. <laughs> purchase the pack unlocks a range shit. of awesome Bungie-themed armor ornaments and cosmetics to collect, including ornament sets inspired by the Bungie 30th Anniversary oh. Celebration oh, that's and Marathon. Sunny. But the dungeon holds one more secret. The crown jewel of its weaponry is a Destiny 1 classic. Get the Galahorn is making no its way. long-awaited debut Get the Destiny fuck 2. out. Yep. We're going to take its iconic status to the next level. Galley has been carefully updated for the Destiny 2 sandbox. They're doing so, it? This December, join <laughs> yeah, they're doing it. Why wouldn't they do it? <laughs> the 30th anniversary <laughs> celebration. But the party isn't only happening in Destiny 2. We've partnered with Nerf what? Limited to create a functional dart firing camera. <laughs> and that's not all. Not Here's a look nothing. at some of the incredible. Oh, loot Nim's gonna spend so much money today. What's coming up. Give me the Nerf Gellerhorn now. Right now. Jenny would be so upset with me if I got that. Because <laughs> I'd just be firing it around the wow, house. Wow, Lorraine, I can't believe we're celebrating Bungie's 30th anniversary. 30 years. It's incredible. Yeah. I mean, Look, think of all the games and products that have come out over these years. Yeah, starting Operation Desert Storm, Pathways to Darkness, yeah. Marathon, Myth, Oni, Halo, and Destiny. Seven years of Destiny. It's an amazing journey. Oh, hey, that's the captain so statue that they you have know, in their have lobby. A lot of really cool yeah. stuff coming up, and a lot of other things in the works, of course, <laughs> New Palladium as boots. always. But yeah. I mean, what do we have? We have the Fallen Captain Celestial Night statue, is sexy. which is incredible. I am getting that captain the statue. The <laughs> I, yeah, well, that's so cool. Ooh, yeah. To wow. nobody's yeah. surprise, yeah. literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get goosebumps just thinking about that. You know, it really it's gives me that nostalgia good. from Destiny 1. And so I think it's a great that's way awesome. that we're going to celebrate not only Bungie's 30 year heritage, but the seven year heritage of Destiny. Yeah. And it definitely gives you the feels. I believe they're, they're doing crossover, bringing back stuff like Ias Luna. I, that was the Claymore from Myth. <laughs> Good stuff. That's rad. Thank you for being on this journey with us, whether it started this year or 30 years ago. We've just started talking about the Witch Queen today. You've got our first peek at weapon crafting, our definitively Destiny campaign, the Glaive, and a year full of updates to all our light based subclasses. All of this and more is coming alongside Savathun's long-awaited arrival front and center to the Destiny universe. The Witch Queen marks an acceleration in our story heading toward the conclusion of the Light and Dark Saga, and we're so excited for everyone to join us on this epic adventure in the Witch Queen, Lightfall, The Final Shape, and beyond. And the Witch Queen's gonna kick off another amazing year of Destiny with four great seasons packed with all of the narrative events and rewards that you've come to expect from us. But there's even more coming next year than just our new seasons. The deluxe edition of the Witch Queen will also include two brand new okay. dungeons to be released in 2022. Okay. And we're also going to be remastering another classic oh Destiny 1 raid and releasing it free for all players. This means going forward, starting this December with our 30th anniversary event, there will be a new piece of raid or dungeon content in the game oh, nice. every, every three, three months. months. Excellent. Okay. In 2022, we will also be adding legacy rotations for raids and dungeons, meaning okay. every week there will be new ways to earn Good. rewards in both the latest and greatest content About and damn time. raids and dungeons <laughs> from the past. If you love amazing in-game content, we want to prove that no other game offers more quality and more variety than Destiny 2. We hope that you've enjoyed a look into the future of Destiny 2. Witch Queen pre-orders are available wherever you play Destiny. Crossplay is live on all devices, and Season of the Lost kicks off today.
Okay, so incredible so news at the end there. We've got old raids coming back. Another D1 raid is coming back. They're basically doing the Age of Triumph thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Having different challenge raids every week. Truth is a funny thing. <laughs> God damn. Who decides what a lot of good news here. Yeah. Tell me, little lights. What is your truth now? Savathun does look like a grandmother right now. Dangerous now she has I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Prepare for what is inevitably to come. All right, it looks like that brings us to the end of the Destiny 2 Showcase. A yeah. lot, a lot of fantastic news covered in this. We got a great look at the Witch Queen, all of the stuff going on there. Narratively, it's going to be great. We got to see what we're going to be doing this season. We got to learn about some new light subclass updates, new weapons, all kinds of crazy things. Crossplay is going live today when we thought it would take a little bit of time before all that got in. Um, I guess we'll do a quick roundtable. What's everybody's opinion? What, what do you think of everything we just saw? I guess uh, starting with uh, you, Nim. <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot, a lot of, a lot of unexpected. Nim said, yeah. "This hole, it was made for me." <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, I'm still just like oozing over that sick armor that they showed for like I think it was the the thirtieth anniversary. Uh, yeah. anniversary. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. My God, that looked real cool. Um, that looked so good. so good. Um, I'm like a little a little surprised, not super surprised at that no new mm -hmm. subclass. But yes, yes. But the rework to the void subclass, the glaive. Oh my God! Yeah, this was not expecting a new weapon, energy weapon type. That combos, yeah. melees, mm -hmm. and projectiles. That's really interesting. Yeah. Very cool. I'm I'm glad that they're like kind of spending this year to be like, hey, we're gonna redo all of the subclasses. Like Yes. I would rather have that at this point in time than a new subclass for all sorts. Yeah, classes. I think that's a fair assessment. No, I completely agree. I um, I, I think uh, rather than focusing all of their time and effort on creating one new subclass, revamp the one you've got. Worry about the rest later. I yeah, think, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that works. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have the glaives. We have weapon crafting coming in. Weapon crafting is going to be huge. a thing. So I mean. <laughs> This entire show was like a list of things we've been complaining about. Yeah, so let's about. let's let's see if we can break it down from what we just watched. We yeah. in Witch Queen we have uh, Hive Guardians. Hive are Guardians, the first new thing. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, as we saw, that's going to affect PVE combat so heavily. Yeah, <laughs> in such a good way. I think um, we have weapon crafting was the next thing. Um, what else have we got? Sorry, I'm like still processing. So. We're going to so, be heading to the throne world of, uh, of Sabathun. Uh, Sabathun. It's going to be a castle. It's like a mixture of uh, the Dreadnought and the Dreaming City. Almost. Mm -hmm. The um, I'm going to put, put this here in, in chat, but the Destiny Twitter has officially posted what the screen or like the background screen for the Void um the new void subclass is uh yeah. like screen oh, is gonna yeah. look Can you like put that on screen yeah I'm going and uh oh my god that's not what i wanted mm. but yeah we got to see all kinds of new things there the lucent brood is the name of the new uh the new class of of hive that are going to be throwing supers at you <laughs> they were blade barraging guardians in that yeah. video I would yeah, have I never seen that coming. Yeah. I don't like that. I'm not a fan. <laughs> I'm so scared. I see enough hunters. I think that's... God, there's so much... Again, like, there. none of us expected that, right? Like, safe yeah. to say, yeah. nobody was expecting that. That is such an incredible way, I think, to refresh how yes. threatening the enemy 
combatants can be in mm-hmm. PVE. Um, phenomenal. Mwah. Chef kiss. Right. Thing and I'm I looking mean, forward to most, I think. And from a lore standpoint, that's, that's kind of an incredible, Insane. incredible Insane. moment. The, the Uncharted hive, the yeah. hive are, are using the light in some capacity yeah. out of you need to have a talk the... to the traveler. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what are you doing? Traveler's Mama ball person. got some splaining to do. She, she sure do. Uh... <laughs> Odds on who the speaker is going to be. <laughs> oh God. Oh, good question. Oh my God. That armor. I It'll know. Be a worm. <laughs> this armor oh, looks rad as hell. <laughs> yeah. The witch queen armor itself that we saw in that little gallivant through the woods cutscene right. situation. I I know we've already seen like concept art for it and mm-hmm. stuff. I am so excited. I, I I love that sort of shit. So the armor, you know, the alchemy oh. set. Yes, that's what right. I'm talking so about. So good, so good. Um, and then okay, so weapon crafting. Yep. Weapon crafting is going to be big. They've shown us this new, um, this new glaive. Mm-hmm. What are our thoughts? How do we how do we feel about that whole situation? Because I like you said, TBL. It's about time. I think a lot of people are excited for weapon crafting. It's it's going to be it's a very interesting sort of thing that they're going to be adding in here. And of course, the glaive is going to be the first of the weapons that we'll be crafting. They mentioned that you're going to be able to make stuff from prior seasons. That uh, raid gear is going to have a crafting element to it. It's going to be really interesting to see where they go with that. But when it comes to the glaive, it's this. It, they're they're taking sort of the the uh, what is it the way the the um, what is the caster is it caster frame for the swords that fire projectiles? Mm-hmm. They're taking that sort of thing that they started with bolt caster way back in destiny one and then kind of mixing it into a brand new energy weapon that's going to be dealing a mixture of combination based melee and projectiles i think this is super interesting it's really unique i have no idea <laughs> I, I had i did, didn't see this coming no, which means i have all. no idea yeah. what other things are going to be coming in the future this is super mm-hmm. creative another sword gets bullets Another uh, sword. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people with it rather I, than chopping. <laughs> I'm looking at our stream right now, and that crafting table, yeah, yeah, looks insane. Yeah, insane. Uh. And they mentioned that you'll be upgrading it by crafting weapons. So the, yeah. the more you craft, the more you're going to be unlocking. I'm assuming that, in terms of perks and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, Very that cool. is what I really really like to hear and that is yeah. something that i think we've mentioned so long ago yeah about how the more you use something like you know the more upgrades and then stuff you unlock more for it like you become yes so does that mean that destiny has made the leap mm-hmm. from mmo light to straight up mmo i mean the, the... Getting i mean there. we had one of <laughs> The devs at the beginning of the stream mentioned that it is taking a turn into more MMO territory. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. Somebody, yeah. somebody did say something similar to that. Um, it's but... clearly the direction that they're that they want to take the game mm-hmm. in. This mm-hmm. is and this is between this crossplay matchmaking for in-game activities and whatnot. Th- that's a giant leap towards the more formatted MMO style of game, mm-hmm. and I um, I could not be happier. Could not be happier. A question I'd like to raise before, mm-hmm. um, like not knowing anything about weapon crafting, but seeing what they've done with transmog. Yes. Do you see part of weapon crafting going behind Eververse, or does that break their ph- philosophy of you earn it, you play it? No, um, I cannot see. I cannot yeah. see weapon stuff going going behind Eververse. Okay. Mm, no, like I, that would that would raise no, such a know. such a huge huge concern with the with the community. Whether <laughs> if if it it be like like certain materials that you need and stuff like that, mm-hmm. like I I can't right. like that just they've always you know. stuck it to cosmetics behind Eververse, and yeah. I don't think you can really apply cosmetics to the weapon crafting, or it'd be confusing as to yeah. what weapon something else someone else is using, like they don't right. exotics. Um, yeah, that's... yeah, and Bungie said a long time ago that microtransactional stuff was never going to be like 
pay to play or yeah. pay to win sort of right so like i i i I can't foresee that happening. I can't imagine that's going to be a thing. Right. Um, but I think Bungie has other ways to earn revenue. Yeah. So I, I yeah. think it's going to be fine. I, I That's not a concern of mine, basically, is the TLDR of what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so. No, I, I agree. I don't think they would. Um, I don't think they would limit or lock that behind an Eververse purchase or e even an optional Eververse purchase um based on principle alone i think what's what much more likely is this is going to be the new resource sink yeah. i mean a lot of people are mm -hmm. still chock full of resources from our grinding before they vaulted a bunch of planets and whatnot this is probably going to be how bungie <laughs> empties those wallets as it were and yeah. um i i'd be surprised to see it in, it requiring anything beyond that just weapon parts maybe a couple planetary mats legendary shards upgrade mats that's probably going to be the gist of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Either way, really great to see that. I'm super interested in seeing what the process is going to be for stuff like raid weapons and whatnot. Because it's clear, Bungie is taking the prismatic recaster system that they started last year and then brought back in recent seasons. And they're, they're sort of upgrading beyond it to turn it just into a full crafting system. So rather than just getting engrams and then curating those, I'd imagine that system's probably going to still be in place in Witch Queen but they're allowing you to build weapons from the ground up in a crafting system that's an evolution of the prismatic recaster and umbral engram system that we have right now, and I'm all about it. It's, it's definitely something that's been needed for a while and uh, cannot wait to see more about it. Yeah. So what do um, we have beyond that? So much. So just real, <laughs> yeah. real quick, actually, because um, this, this wasn't in, in the reveal or anything, and I, I think it's just interesting. Um, but the security team has posted an update. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, it actually looks like they're going to start going after account recoveries now. Ooh. Really? Huh. Yeah. Good news. So just as like, just kind of like TLDR to keep it in a little bit short, they do they they post something that you know that says not recommended, but it won't get you banned, and they have you like a, a list of things of you know like yeah. you know, if you let your kid play or your roommates share an account and stuff like that. Uh, but what could get you banned and or restricted is things like charging others to recover their account for boosting earning items, completing content, etc. Along Boy. with some uh, some other stuff, too, which is interesting on how they're going to uh, enforce that. Enforce mm -hmm. that, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's but gonna be... that's the first time that they have this, like, explicitly said um, anything about account recoveries being, you right. know, Mm -hmm. and it's been in, on the hand in terms of service right but it's always been a gray area like yeah, they've yeah. never said hey yeah. yeah no this is 100 percent gonna get you banned yeah now they're like straight up like telling you that especially because you pay on like a different platform than what you right. use for to play the game so springboarding off of that trials changes do we want trials to talk about Ooh, trials yeah. changes tb i'll take it away uh, yeah, Trials is getting matchmaking, finally, for the people out there who maybe don't have a stacked squad to go into Trials every weekend. They are adding solo matchmaking to Trials of Osiris, and that is a fantastic and necessary change for the game mode. Um, Bungie's talked a lot about Trials, wanting to get more and more people in. I think this is how you do it. You, yeah. uh, you make it more accessible to people who don't have a dedicated group of gamers to take them flawless every single weekend. You make it more accessible to people who are trying to solo queue in there. It's a change that people have been asking for for a long time, and I think it's going to do wonders for the, 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 the player pool within Trials of Osiris. Good yeah. stuff. Insane. I'm going to be playing so much more Trials than I ever yeah. have, I think, in Destiny 2, um, just based on those prospects alone. Yeah. Because that's been the barrier normal. to entry, you yeah. know? It you know, really if, has, if you, yeah. If you didn't have a set squad, you couldn't go in there. And um, adding matchmaking to it is... And solo is, queue. Is, 
and so Q, which yeah. is you know ah. it, it's similar to what the system we have in Iron Banner is with the freelance pro- or sort of playlist. Uh, it's opening it up to people who maybe wanted to try out trials but didn't have the resources available to go in there and run flawless. Just yeah, that that's exactly what Bungie needed to do. They wanted to open up trials to everybody. They wanted to make it more appealing to people who may not be uh, quite so incentivized to jump in there. This is the way you do it. So Definitely. part of part of my question here, because we now have a new cadence for in-game PVE activities as yeah. well. When do you think we start getting matchmaking for raids? Oh, it's coming. It yeah. has to be. And, um, you know, that's another step into the, the MMO pool because mm-hmm. raids and MMOs have matchmaking. And uh, I think Bungie, you know, they've, they've been shy about that for a long time just because of the way they the way their raids are designed the puzzles and whatnot um held within and of course you know the the, the aspect of uh, of in-game communication and all of that but i think that is that's going to be one of the next big steps that they take so with crossplay going live today do you think okay. um kind of thinking about matchmaking with raids do you think we're going to have like text chat on console and stuff now um things like that to kind of facilitate didn't just they... speculation here i, think <laughs> I they... don't know what's gonna happen in a matter of hours yeah i think they talked about that not coming until the winter correct okay yeah. yes they okay. did say that okay. text chat would be coming to console sometime this winter in the way okay got it i missed the memo on that but that's really cool um yes that'll be extremely extremely useful yeah yeah uh, that was something they brought up a few twabs ago i um i, I do believe mm-hmm. so yeah um I there's yeah. i'm just excited like knowing that there's going to be a new raid cadence every three months and yeah now having cross play yeah. like there's there's a i'm i'm feeling anxiety about the amount of friendship <laughs> i'm feeling <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah boy. i mean absolutely and um you know even beyond all this we got to see a bit of, of what's going to be coming beyond witch queen too uh, they mentioned that the final shape is going to be the uh, the bit of Destiny 2 content beyond Witch Queen, and then we're going to have something else beyond that. So it seems like they are sticking with the Destiny 2 formula for quite some time to come. And I'm down with yeah. that. Yeah. And they did I say... Am... Um... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. They did say it was the uh, end of the Light and Dark saga, not yes. necessarily yes. the mm-hmm. end of Destiny itself, so... That's what I was going to mention. That is such a big change because, you know, the battle between light and dark has been foundational to Destiny's narrative yeah. the whole time. So mm-hmm. I can't even fathom what that's going to look like beyond It's going to be crazy with that. What kind of world is our Guardian yeah. going to live in post light v dark, right? It's going to be all politics. you got to set up um... a responsible <laughs> taxation system. <laughs> it becomes the Star Wars prequels. Oh, no. As long as we get a Destiny Bombad Racing, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Um, So beyond that, I guess that that, that covers a lot of the stuff with Witch Queen. Mm -hmm. After that, we got some sneak peeks Mm -hmm. of Season 15. What do we have to say about what we're going to be doing this season? We're going to be heading back to the Dreaming City. It's going to be the run-up into the Witch Queen itself. We've got a bunch of brand new content coming. The 30th anniversary is getting ready to happen. We've got a bunch of outside weapons and armor and event mm-hmm. and stuff from Bungie's history coming into Destiny 2. We've How got cool the return of Gallerhorn. I mean, so many things are about yeah. to hit the pipeline. For the Garrel Horn returning and like <laughs> having a dungeon in the entrance of the loot cave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amazing. They they know what we want. <laughs> it's about time the Awoken caught a break. So like yeah. Yeah. since 2015, they've just been suffering. <laughs> they've been in an everlasting curse. <laughs> uh, yeah, You're going back the to the Dreaming weeks. City is uh huge yeah that's it's such a phenomenal yeah. space and you know we haven't really had much reason to go back there since forsaken um who i'm stoked i i love it there i i think that is one of the most beautiful um right player spaces that bungie has ever designed to this day um so the fact that they're utilizing it again um is very exciting to yeah. me personally <laughs> yeah 
it's it's good stuff. It does confirm to me that the the Dreaming City itself is probably going to be vaulted when Witch Queen comes out. And so they're, um, a quick image that popped up was of the EDZ. Yes. Yeah. So Hello? I would be surprised if that was <laughs> going as well. Makes me wonder right. if we're going back to our my my personal other favorite place, the the Dark Forest in the EDZ. Mm. Ooh, yeah. That would be really cool to see. I could see that. Well, um, one of the interesting things is that if they were to vault the um, the Dreaming City, what would happen with Forsaken? Would it like it, would it stop being sold? Because it's a core part of the campaign. Mm -hmm. um, That's a really good question. Forsaken, I think they said, is going free to play with Witch Queen, didn't they? Did they? I can't remember if they confirmed they that or not. There I was so much was information in there that like yeah. <laughs> it's it's hard to keep track of everything, but um. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I, they mentioned that they have they're, they're going to be revamping the new light experience again. Yeah. <laughs> so I mm -hmm. wonder if that's going to be a part of it. Potentially, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, live games stuff is always changing, and that includes like the structure of how content is right. managed and released. So I guess we'll see. Yeah. I don't know. So as a part of this season, one of the things we're going to be doing is we're going to be heading into the uh, the the shattered worlds that we got to see there in the EDZ. You know, uh, the 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 church and all of that kind of taken into its own sort of weird throne world. I imagine that's going to be a part of uh, whatever seasonal stories or activities we're going to be getting in just uh, just a little bit of time as reset comes upon us. Um, yeah. we got to see a brand new exotic. I think it was called Ager Scepter. Yes, brand new trace rifle exotic. <laughs> I want it <laughs> so bad. You'll probably be getting it. <laughs> that's yeah, that's season. probably going to be the so season bad. pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, oh I'd imagine God. that's going to be the season pass exotic that'll be uh, waiting for you as soon as you log in. If mm -hmm. well, if you can log in, <laughs> it's going to yeah. be a cute. Oh, it's going to be a little bit Bro, with crunchy the quickness. in there. Oh, yes. Yeah. If if last season, like last season, we had all the error codes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This uh -huh. season we have crossplay on top of it. Oh, it's, God. yeah, it's gonna be super oh, crunched yeah. because everybody's gonna be trying to claim their names yeah, today. Those, server, those servers are gonna take a beating. <laughs> Good luck and have fun if you're able to get in. Uh, I'm just ready for a cessation of the uh, posts saying that Cold Heart should be a stasis weapon. Like there oh, you go. I talked about this on stasis <laughs> <space> <laughs> rifle. Yeah, you got it. You can stop. Yeah, it's funny we mentioned the arc rifle to be changed. Yeah, and like we mentioned, uh, we 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 discussed what the new exotic would be. Happy to say, our show mentioned Stasis Trace Rifle. Got it. We got it. <laughs> Do Nailed you remember it. what episode that was? It was it was this week. Yeah, two ninety. Oh, this week. Episode okay. two ninety. That's it. It was this week. We asked about what we 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 panelled what we thought the new exotic would be and um, brought up Stasis. Uh, Trace rifle, which is who said it? Who who gets five dollars from the bet? <laughs> I don't know if it was crit or TBL. Somebody. I wasn't there, but I'll take credit. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll send you the five dollars. <laughs> that's not the only exotic we got to see, because after that they showed that quick clip of I, I couldn't tell if it was a scout rifle or or, or a linear fusion or something. Yeah. But it headshot that guy, dropped like a dog tag looking thing, and then. Yeah, picked it up and did something with it. Um, it was the something driver. I might have to to go through the YouTube scroll and see if I can find it. But it was uh, it was, let's see. I'm right, I'm going Lorenz through driver. Right now. Yeah, it was the Lorenz driver. Um, it looks like yeah, he just lands a headshot with it. It's got a little bit of a charge time. It might be a fusion rifle. It's got the same reload animation as a fusion rifle, but it he it did fires like a linear fusion bolt. Drops a bit of a dog tag. He picks it up, and it looks like it powers the gun up. I wonder if that's going to be tied to an exotic quest, or if that's going to be just in the in the exotic loot pool from here on out. Possible Absolutely mission. Insane. You know what? I remember now. The trace rifle is going to be tied to an exotic mission. So uh, the Lorenz might be the seasonal exotic. Exotic. As a matter of fact, yeah, new season pass exotic is the Lorenz driver. So okay. the uh, the trace rifle is going to be a, a a quest weapon. I think that's pretty cool. I'll take it. 
Um, so just give me the gun. <laughs> so I'm looking actually. Uh, immediately, I decided to go back into the uh, the press kit. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's should. some there's 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 some updated stuff in there, including what looks to be a Gellerhorn themed sparrow. Link me. Oh, hell, yeah. <laughs> Can you drop there one of Can you put the whole D1? press kit there in was the, the chat, please? Uh, ye yeah. The host chat or the Twitch chat? It doesn't. Very matter. smart, by the way. Always check the press kit on news every, days. A, every season, I go in there and take a peek. I'm like, all right, what what are you not showing? Is there a bungee? That gif what of you... Kim K like peeking around the bushes. Yeah, ex literally. <laughs> Here, this this is where like the screenshots are. We also right. got to see some of the uh, the legendary stasis guns and how those are going to be working here. Yeah. And like Bungie spoke about in last week's swab, they're, uh, they are going to have slowing and freezing effects. But, uh, ooh, these are awesome screenshots. Beautiful stuff. I but, remember um, when this was a drive link. <laughs> or a uh, one drive Yeah, it, it was Sorry. like a Dropbox or something it like was, that. It was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, Bungie upping all of their production values. Did you see that stage they set up for the show today? Oh, yeah. Like, Gorgeous. Like an, I wonder if that was in their theater. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. It, it, it's like an E3 production for them now, which is beautiful. Great work. But um, really one, of the, one of the legendary stasis weapons they showed was, an auto, uh, was a hand cannon, a 180 hand cannon that after you got a kill, like, spawned a crystal. One of those big crystals that you could shatter. Mm -hmm. So it mm -hmm. looks like all the different stasis weapons are going to have different types of abilities. Some are going to slow. Some are going to freeze targets directly. Some are going to spawn crystals. It's good stuff. And I believe they said that uh, most of them will be related to on-kill effects so they don't become too oppressive in PvP. Yes, exactly. Um, Which is good news. Very good news. Deuce in chat asks a pretty good question. When when do you guys think we'll see stasis armor pop up? Ooh, like uh, like stasis <laughs> element armor? I don't know, man, but I wanted it for so long now. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to imagine we, sometime soon. We yeah, really don't I... have that much. Um, so usually it's tied to the fact that you can do the defense mods for various elements, you know, reduce and yeah. avoid damage and whatnot. We don't really get a lot of incoming stasis damage at the moment. So it'd be interesting right. uh, if that Witch Queen will change ramped that. up. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got these, uh, we've got light based hive. I don't know if we're, I wonder if we're going to get at some point more stasis based enemies like Aramis was. I mean, that Speaking would be of. really fun. Again, mm -hmm. just introducing new mechanics into PVE stuff to refresh it would be fantastic. Yeah be interesting stuff and speaking of um the light based subclasses we do know that they're getting revamped uh bungie said that's that's going to be coming basically every season they're going to be getting aspects and fragments which is mm -hmm. we got to see one of the void subclasses uh with a a projectile <laughs> melee that's so exciting can't All wait right. to use it <laughs> can't wait that's going to be cool and um, we're going to be seeing those changes on a season-by-season -season basis, which is, that's exactly what we wanted. When we, when we got the stasis system with Beyond Light and we got access to aspects and fragments, we thought, oh, this is a beautiful way to evolve the sort of subclass build that we've had for such a long time. And everybody wanted to see that change come to, to, to the light subclasses. So I'm glad that Bungie decided to go with it. Very good news. Heck yeah. Um, let's see, what else? They mentioned something about having... New raids and new dun or new either new raids or new dungeons coming every three months. So mm -hmm. basically every season, didn't they? Yes. I wonder if that's you know what it is. That's going to have to include old raids coming back because they, they mentioned that old raids were going to be coming back into the fold to uh, fit with their new weekly model of having different featured raids every week. Mm -hmm. So what which old raids would you like to see back from D two? Kings full. <laughs> instantly right there well, need that one king's fault yeah they did say a d1 <laughs> raid is going to be next on the list uh, for something coming back and that's we we've got king's fall crota's it's, end and wrath mm -hmm. of the machine mm -hmm. it's honestly for me it's so hard to say because both king's fall and crota's end have such amazing looking gear mm -hmm. 
I think they can uh, cheat, bring King's Fall, and Crota's in and make Crota's in the dungeon. Yeah. <laughs> Just do it. I mean, you're right. <laughs> it was practically a strike. It, you can beat yeah. it with, um, with bananas tied to your uh, <laughs> S3, then you can... Yeah. Yeah, you can beat it while a using a Dance Dance Revolution pad as a controller. Blindfolded. <laughs> they also talked about the addition of um, legendary level of um, difficulty. Yeah, yeah, yeah difficulty for in, the uh, story. For yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're finally is, adding a hard mode for story, <laughs> which is very reminiscent to like the ha the the Halo legendary yeah. uh, story modes, which are rough. Yeah, those AI, they don't miss. <laughs> if you're dumb enough to activate those skulls, you're going to yeah. pay for it in Halo. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's going to be really interesting, making the uh, the story mode more difficult. I think that means that there's going to be a way to replay story, like yeah. in a more direct manner. Mm -hmm. And I'm definitely down with that. Insane. And there's been this argument for the longest time about who do you cater to, the casual to the hardcore audience, and it's nice that yes. they're not taking one route. Yeah, I think you could do both. They've certainly proven that here with a lot of the changes that they're making. Very interesting stuff. And then, of course, uh, <laughs> I think the only news that's left after that was just most of the 30th anniversary stuff. I think it's really crazy that they're going to be pulling from their 30 years of history to kind of merge a lot of that stuff here into the Destiny universe. We're going to be getting weapons and armor from uh, from games like Myth. Yeah. So I was looking at the um crazy. I was looking at some of that armor and I know catastrophe and chat also mentioned it. The I think it's under uh Yeah, it's 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 the one that's yeah. next to the Gallarhorn. Um the Titans have uh a needler Paul. Yeah. Bruin. Yeah. And the warlock Looks like they have a uh, what you call it? A Halo ring bond. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Which okay, which image is that? I think I have it up on it's, the screen right now, right? Um, no, that's not the one. That's not the one. No, it's the one where like the hunter has like the beanie. Okay, oh, where he's in the purple it, oh, jacket. It's this one, yeah. Yep, that's the, the, the Needler shoulder pad, a Halo uh, class. That's an awesome trench coat. Bungie, by, by the way, way. Uh, Dan, um, TBL coats. and I are frozen on I your stream. I know, I'm trying to fix that, but I don't know. Gotcha. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like if you look at the the Titan, one of his pauldrons is is the Needler. Mm -hmm. And the Warlock Bond straight up looks like a Halo ring. Yeah. Although I'm digging that jacket. We need that more trench coat. Yeah, man. Yeah, we need more it. yeah it looks, it looks real fucking good, man. Hand it over. And so this is all. Th and that's than the Titan. Kind of. <laughs> it's about time. But this is all a part of the uh, the 30th anniversary, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's probably going to be what the uh, the uh, the the Eververse set. Yeah. Most likely. But. Good stuff. Take there. my money, Bungie. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the bright dust. I'm ready. I, you know it. Yeah, I've been. Uh, what else? Do we cover most of it? Um, I think that's 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 a, a lot of the biggest bits of news there. Of course, Gallerhorn coming back. We're gonna have a Gallerhorn themed sparrow like we did mm -hmm. in D one. Um. Looking through some That's of the press sweet. kit now, um, mm -hmm. like looking at the season of the Lost Helm. Which queen's gonna have two or two dungeons that launch alongside it? So that'll be nice. I remember them saying that, and that they're gonna be uh, along that. You know, the whole remastering of classic raids, then adding those into a weekly rotation. It, we're we're finally kind of entering an Age of Triumph world here in Destiny Two, yeah. and it's about time. Like, that's that's my biggest takeaway from all of this is that Bungie is doing a lot of the things that we have been asking them to do for a long, long time between weapon crafting and crossplay and matchmaking and trials and all of that kind of stuff. Bungie's making a lot of moves forward that I think um, 
are going to be incredible for the health of the game. Like, the sky is the limit. And season 15, starting today, is looking like it's going to be pretty good. Heck yeah. But there we go. I think that pretty much covers most of everything in the uh, the the Destiny 2 showcase. <laughs> as much as we can, at yeah. least, right? <laughs> as, as much as I can remember. Is, uh, is We want to get some final thoughts on what everybody's, uh, what everybody's seen today. Uh, I'm so hype. So hype. <laughs> I, and admittedly, and you know, Planet Destiny being part of my job and part of what I do. And I I felt pretty guilty for the past year, um, kind of not being as attentive to the franchise as I really should, um, admittedly, but this is going to suck me right back in. Just no questions. There's a lot to like here. Mm Mm-hmm. 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 And I think even this upcoming season, I feel the same about too. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. What about yeah. you, Nem? I am erect. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I regret asking. You are getting that hive ghost, aren't you? <laughs> oh, for sure. I don't look. I don't need you judging me. Okay. Listen. Yeah, but okay. Listen. <laughs> listen. <laughs> Yes, yes, I am. Dan, shut up. <laughs> I can already see a spot for it on your bookcase back there. I do. It's gonna. I happen. have two ghosts on that shelf. You can't see it because Nvidia uh, is like blurring, blurring it. Yeah. my uh, my stuff here. Maybe this will. Like, I have right two in the ghosts on on that shelf. You see the thorn right there in the middle, and then there's like the regular, the generalist ghost, and yeah. then there's the uh, the the crucible one over there which uh yeah there's a spot right in the middle for a hive ghost if you ask me i'm just saying this is where i'd put my hive ghost if i had one <laughs> when i have one <laughs> yeah. uh, right on um what about you dan i'm really i'm really surprised that they that they launched crossplay alongside the new season yeah i'm, I'm yeah really really happy um, yeah, completely blindsided by that. Yeah. Updates up, uh, by the way, on PC. Yeah. yeah uh, oh, looking now to... Downloading update now. now. I'm, I've got my <laughs> PlayStation running, so trying to figure out... Four gigs. Yeah, it's going to um, be meeting. But the uh, the raid cadence, Meaty. the raid and in-game PvE cadence yes. really has me. Yes. And um, I don't know. Like, the, the glaive looks cool. Everything looked cool. The, the amount of times that I got... Uh, goosebumps during this reveal like we're many <laughs> so yeah yeah here's i oh, so look i i was going in i'm going straight up i was going in but with very Measured very tempered expectations. expectations yeah yeah Same. uh as to what was going on like i've and this this happens a lot to, especially towards like the ending of a cycle where i just kind of start losing interest in the game and Things start becoming a little bit more formulaic, and you know what to expect, and um, just yeah, don't want to get too excited about it. Breaking the formula, mm-hmm. right. right? Exactly. Yeah. So when you know, seeing a lot of this stuff that I wasn't really expecting, especially something like weapon crafting, to mm-hmm. come to Destiny, and like you know, the the narrative with like the Hive Guardians and the Glaive, and fucking all of that cool shit that they showed off, like. Definitely made me feel a little bit more excited than I was anticipating. Let me tell you, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, also, the fact that this, I think, something we haven't talked about February 22nd, that's a long time. Yes, that's a really long, long time. time. Like, is that longer than arrivals? Probably, I think so. Yeah, yes, I arrivals was extended almost last minute. Um, but this one, it has Ar- straight from the get-go. Arrivals to be started, what, in, like, September? Can't remember when Season of Arrivals launched. I mean, it's been, it, it, it lasted a long time. A long time. And this is going to be a uh, this is going to be a pretty decent-sized wait before uh, Witch Queen. But we oh, no, it was from June 9th. Ooh. June 9th through November 10th was Season of Arrivals. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So about on par. Yeah, about the same. Yeah. Yeah. Just about. Mm-hmm. I. Well, we've got in this that case, they do have it. Um, they were expecting it. In this case, there was no like COVID like delay. Right. So they'll yeah. be able to yeah. fill out that uh, time frame a bit more. 
Um, I, what was I going to say? I think it's, it's going to be a little bit easier to, um, handle with that event that we have in December, mm -hmm. the, the Bungie anniversary event. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, it's, I, I think it's going to kind of soften the blow of that weight. At least I would hope. Yeah. For people who, who pick that up. Cause it is yeah. a, um, it's a pay it's, you have to pay to get into that. Right. Like at mm -hmm. least to the but dungeon, you have to get that pack. I think so. Yeah. Well, in any case. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, when you uh, when you launch on PC, you get the Battle Light launcher. Ooh. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. You know what? They they did say that would have to be installed, and then it'll launch itself whenever you launch D two. <laughs> mm -hmm. In order to serve its purpose of preventing and detecting the use of cheat software with the goal of ensuring a fair game environment, Battle Line may process the following information. Uh, IP address, game identifiers, hardware device, information about the running OS, information about game-related operating system-related files and memory. So this is going deep into your, uh, into your PC. Uh, information about running processes. Um, and other executable codes, file names included information listed here, uh, which might also contain your operating uh, system username. So it, yeah, it. I really hope that this like just prevents it's some of the hardcore it. cheats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, at least some of the extremely blatant ones. Yeah, right. exactly. Um, other than that. I think that's it. I think that's a show. Yeah, I think. Well, I, so how did you guys feel about this? About doing this live? Oh, good stuff. I liked it. It was good. It was good. I was intending on doing something similar anyway, so it's better to do it with friends. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah. For sure. I hope. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Sorry. Yeah, it means I know right away that I'm going to have to fight them for those uh, physical ghosts. Because oh, I plan absolutely. to break one oh, every it's... single time I kill a hive. I'm just going to smash another <laughs> one on my shelf. <laughs> Just picking yeah. up the remains mine. Right. Good stuff. A lot to love here. I think um, I think we've got a lot to look forward to when it comes to uh, future content in Destiny 2. And Bungie's done an amazing job. My, my, my one big takeaway from all of this, Nim, mm -hmm. is the fact that I get to go rub John's nose in it. <laughs> Everything he's been complaining about. Everything. I can rub his nose in it now. Oh, before... I'm sure he'll come up with something else to say. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, before we go, yes, um, we have been asked what our least favorite thing about the showcase is from uh, Last Lady Legends. Ooh, the least a... favorite Yallerhorn. thing. Yallerhorn, Yallerhorn really? Yeah. yeah. The, oh. I, I was wondering about it the whole time because mm -hmm. it's got. They have to make it so that it it's. It like scratches that itch that it did from D one, right? But not to become the next anarchy and what it was in D one, mm -hmm. where every raid you have to run a Gallerhorn, and mm -hmm. if it's not that good, then will people still want to use it? Exactly. Will it yeah, show it's up like Vex? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be possibly the <laughs> toughest weapon to balance because there's so many expectations for it. Right. You want to get enough of them. I, I think they're in a decent position. I think one of the reasons why they're okay with bringing it back now is because they're in a decent position to kind of keep the reins on it. I mean, look at something like Eyes of Tomorrow, mm -hmm. where they included specific code to keep it from being too effective <laughs> against, like, raid bosses and stuff like that. Um, so I, I think that's probably the reason why they're bringing it back now, because they feel they can bring it back in a form that is going to be viable, but not overwhelming. We'll never get Pocket Infinity, though. Right. <laughs> It'll never happen. I don't know, so man. If, if Gallarhorn is back, I wouldn't. I wouldn't dismiss the possibility at this point. As I understand it, Pocket Infinity wasn't just a busted, overpowered monster of a weapon. It also broke the code worse than Telesto. <laughs> <laughs> Telesto Ooh. is going to transform itself into Pocket Infinity as we <laughs> begin spewing those. Pulls off the mag, the mask. <laughs> you thought it was Dio, but it was me, Pocket Infinity. <laughs> uh, you, um, God, I wish it was Pocket Infinity. <laughs> Um, oh, my least favorite thing. Mm -hmm. I, hmm, the fact that Hive are gonna be golden gunning me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got oh, hold on. 
Not yeah. a fan. Don't Nova bomb you too. Don't worry. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, after, and after that clip, Nim posted last night. I don't need any hive Nova bomb tracking me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, not. it's coming, baby. Just wait for it. Absolutely not. Uninstall. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Bungie Help just posted the notes as well. Oh. So. Okay. Oh, the patch notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, oh, TBL. Uh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for video. Yeah. All right. Um, but all right. Does that cover everything here? Yep. I think we're good to go. Well, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that is pretty much it for our coverage of the Destiny 2 Showcase. We got to see a lot of incredible stuff there. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as we did. And who knows, maybe the next time they do one of these, we can do the same thing. Kind of get together and have a live panel discussion on it. I like that a lot better than just sitting back and reading my thoughts. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and we'll probably... So this coming Sunday, we'll have an episode Mm -hmm. as well. Oh, yeah. And, uh, like... Odds are we'll probably have our thoughts a little bit more put together on this. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, mm-hmm. thanks everybody for tuning in uh, to this like first attempt from us on this on this kind of front. And uh, yeah, at you in the next one. Yeah, later. <laughs>